Hi, if you're in the market for a microwave then it can be really confusing because there's so much choice. So what I thought to do is I'd make a video on 10 things to consider before buying a microwave rather than just going for the cheapest. Because sometimes you can find that by paying a little bit more and going for something that's got a couple of other features that can be really useful then it could be worth it. So let's have a look. So number one and I suppose one of the most important things is what are you going to use it for? So I know it sounds silly because you're thinking well I'm just going to heat food up in it but for some people they would be happy with something like a solo microwave. Uh, with this this is just a microwave on its own and this is ideal for things like reheating uh, but when it comes to actual cooking then they're not that great. Uh, then the next choice is a microwave and grill. Uh, the main advantage of that is that if you are cooking something like a jacket potato then as well as cooking on the inside then when you combine it with the grill then you can get the nice crispy skin on the outside. They tend to be less popular nowadays because more people tend to be going for the full combination ovens like this one and with these combination microwaves then what you'll find is you've got the microwave oven and grill so you've got all three in there and the main advantage is that you can actually bake in there so you can do a full dinner if you wanted to so you could say cook a roast chicken what we are finding is that some people are actually replacing their oven with something like this the combination microwave the main advantage is if space is at premium in the kitchen then by using something like this it could actually free up space for another appliance. So number two on the list will be the dimensions of the microwave. There's nothing worse than buying one or ordering online then getting it home going to put it in a space and realizing it doesn't fit. That's really frustrating. So have a measure and make sure it fits in. Uh, things like the, the solo microwave so just to give you an idea so something like this is around 44 centimeters wide and the depth of it that one is about 34. Uh, compared to this one which is the combination one and just the width of it is 51 centimeters so it's quite a bit wider but the depth on combination microwaves are quite a bit deeper than on most solar microwaves. So on this one that's around 40 centimeters so it's quite a bit deeper than that one so yeah have a measure before you buy one. Now number three on the list and I know it sounds basic, but it's what colour do you want your microwave to be? Now, all manufacturers will make things like this. So you've got white or silver or stainless steel. Uh, quite a few other manufacturers will make uh, other colours. So you've got things like black, red, pink. There's, there's a whole range of colours that some of them make. Uh, what I recommend is try and look for something that is going to last some time. Uh, so at home, we tend to change colours in the kitchen. Uh, so rather than having say a red microwave stuck in the corner and we move on to a different colour theme then that could be quite annoying. So try and choose something that you think will last the time. So number four on the list will be the internal capacity of the microwave. Uh, what I mean by that is it's how big it is inside. What you'll find is on some of the basic microwaves then capacity can be quite small. You're normally looking around 17 to 20 litre capacity. As you go up to the bigger and better microwaves then capacity does get a lot bigger. Um, the main advantage is if you're doing, especially if things like baking, then you can get a, a much larger pan or dish in there for cooking. Um, also for reheating purposes, you can normally fit a full size dinner plate in there, especially if it's one of our dinner plates and you'd need one of these. Uh, so capacity on these ones tend to go to around 27 or up to 32 liters on some of the very big ones. I'll just give you an example of the internal capacity. And I know in each one it does get bigger overall, things like the width, height and depth as you go up through the range. Uh, but just to show you the width comparison, so on this one it's 27 centimetres wide. And as you go up to this one, which has got a 27 litre capacity, then this is around 35 centimetres wide. So straight away it just means that the plate or dish, whatever you're putting in here to heat up, can be bigger. And number five on the list would be the lining material. And what I mean by this is what is this made out of, the inside. What you tend to find is that on some of the cheaper microwaves, these are like an acrylic lining, uh, which is okay, but they are built to a price. Whereas you go as you go up to some of the better microwaves, just show you on this one, then you've got the full stainless steel interior. Uh, this is a much better option. Clearly they are more expensive, but as I say, it's a much better option because they're easier to keep clean 
they're a lot longer lasting and the paint doesn't chip off on something like this compared to some of the cheap acrylic ones. Now number six on the list will be the wattage of the microwave. Now wattages tend to vary from around 650 watts for the very basic microwaves up to, but it can be around 18, 1900 watts. So they can vary a huge amount. On the whole, what you'll find is that the higher the wattage, the quicker something will cook. Now that's not always a good thing. So what I'd always recommend is when you're looking for a microwave, again, try and go for one that has got a, a slightly higher wattage, at least 900 or 1000 watts. Uh, but also on the control panel, have a look for something that's got a high, medium and low setting as a minimum. There's quite a few other programs uh, that I'll talk about in a moment. But the main reason I say that, because when you're cooking something, um, sometimes there's something like porridge, if you're doing it in the microwave, that you don't necessarily want that on a high setting. Sometimes to have something cooked on a medium setting can be a lot better than just completely blasting it on the high setting. Now number seven will be turntable or flatbed. And what I mean by that? So this microwave has a traditional turntable and it's a, just a glass turntable that's quite easy to, you know, you can take that out and it's easy to clean. And you can take that out and it's, it's not too bad inside. So it's nice and easy to keep clean in there. Uh, but as, as of recent years, quite a few manufacturers have come out with something called flatbed technology. And let's just go on example here on this Panasonic microwave. There are several advantages of flatbed technology. The first one is that it's much easier to keep clean. Uh, you don't have the glass turntable inside to take out and potentially drop because we do end up selling a lot of glass turntables. Uh, so you've not got that to worry about. Also, when it comes to cleaning, it's a lot easier because if anything does spill, then it just spills on here and on here you've got to like a, a little rubber lining around here. So if, if something does boil over, which you know it does happen on the odd occasion, then it's nice and easy to keep clean. The other advantage, when you are heating something up or cooking something, then by having the flat bed, it means you can put much larger dishes in there and also they don't have to be round. Uh, what you'll tend to find is if you have a, say a, a large dish that just fits in there, then that could be perfect to go in there, whereas you couldn't put it in one that's got a normal turntable. Because clearly when you've got the turntable, then you have to allow for it rotating. Now number eight will be the programs on the microwave. Now I know for a lot of people, all you want to do is you just want to put something in for two minutes, just to reheat something, and then away you go. And that can be quite a simple process, just using these buttons here. Uh, but a lot of microwaves, and to be fair, even a lot of the basic ones, uh, do have some of these options as well and these are called auto weight programs so all you need to do is as long as you know the weight of the food that you're putting in then you can actually select what it is and the microwave will know how long to cook it for uh, so that has a huge advantage especially with things like meat so if you were uh, wanting to cook meat or, or reheat it then you do have to make sure you do it properly and that it's cooked long enough uh, so once you've weighed it, then all you do is you press that and then it will actually know how long to cook for. Now some microwaves have other functions as well, things like chaos defrost, which is a much more even defrosting, uh, and things like auto roast programs, so there's, there's a whole range of programs that you can go into. Now number nine on the list would be to see if the microwave comes with any accessories. And when I say that, I mean, I don't mean things like the turntable, that are fairly standard, uh, but things like this, so you've got things like the uh, the grill rack or you've got other pans that can make life a lot easier. So things like this, uh, if you are grilling something on top then this is like a drip tray that can make life a lot easier for cleaning. So have a look to see in the specification to see what accessories come with it. Also you can find in some of the higher end models, especially the, the convection ones uh, or the combination microwaves, that as you go really high up in the range some of them come with uh, racks. So if you're going to cook in them or if you're going to do some baking, then they actually come with shelves, uh, sometimes a couple of shelves, which again, if you're cooking things like cakes, then that can be really useful. So number 10 in the list, and I suppose for a lot of people, this will be number one, and that's the cost of the microwave. Uh, the reason I leave it till last is because for really, it, it shouldn't be, I suppose, number one priority. Uh, because what you should do is you should look for a microwave that's going to be suitable for your needs. 
So if something, you know, if you are going to use a microwave, uh, especially if you're going to use it with a grill and something like an oven as well, then try and stretch to something like that because it could make life a whole lot easier for you. Uh, but I suppose ultimately price is always going to be key. Uh, prices on microwaves can vary from sort of 30 to 40 pound at the cheaper end of the market, going up to four or 500 pounds for uh, a combination one. Uh, clearly what I've talked about today is freestanding microwaves. Uh, as you go up into the integrated microwave oven market, uh, something I've not really touched on, but a lot of these things that I've talked about are very similar for that as well. So I hope you enjoyed this quick video on 10 things to consider before buying a microwave. I know there's probably things I've forgotten, uh, there's a whole list of things that I could have talked about and gone into more depth, uh, but that's just really a quick overview of things to consider. Uh, if I have missed things, then put it in the comments below, uh, something I, I should have considered. Uh, but all I'd normally say is please give us a thumbs up on a YouTube video, click subscribe and leave any comments below. So if you've got any questions about microwaves or any of these products, then leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.